Hey everybody, welcome to the BDC podcast. We're always so happy when you tune in uh, to this and uh, watch it and share it with your friends. Don't forget to share it. Go on social media, share it. Let your friends know about it. And um, we've been just really having a powerful teaching here about Job, the man God healed. Before I get into this, I want to thank my son, Alex, for doing all the behind the scenes. So I guess he would be the producer you know, of uh, everything that happens. And he's always behind the camera. He's looking at me right now. And uh, so I want to thank Alex for doing that. And also uh, my nephew, uh, Tommy Rutherford, for doing all the graphics for the for YouTube. Uh, he does that. So it's just great to have a crew of young people that know what they're doing. Really, you know, um, I'm surprised my church has gone this far because <laughs> really, I, I, I tell people I'm a one talent guy. I could teach the word of God, but um, now we've got, we got all these young people in our church and man, they know what they're doing with all this uh, tech stuff. And so um, I'm thankful for that. And this way we can get the word of God out there uh, to more people. And uh, so thanks you. Uh, thank you to Alex and Tommy. And thank you to you, all of our listeners, and all the BDC members that are listening to this as well. A lot of you have showed your support and say, hey, I really love this, listening to this during the week. And uh, uh, we appreciate you being a part of it. If you're not familiar with the Dream Center, or maybe you, maybe you live in Buffalo, come out and join us 11 a.m. Sunday mornings. If you're not from Buffalo. There's lots of ways you can get involved. We have people actually come here for missions trips. We are right now booking trips uh, for Honduras as well. All of our missions trips and information on how to get involved, whether you want to go to the inner city or overseas, is on our website. So go on our website at buffalodreamcenter.org. And also, uh, we have a Bible school, uh, you know, Dream Center School of Ministry, where we're teaching actual Bible college classes that you can get credit for. And you can get your associate's degree, your your, ba- your bachelor's, your master's. Your do- Some are working on their doctorates in ministry right now. And you can do that all through the Dream Center. We, we just got a lot going on. And uh, we want uh, you to be a, a part of it. And uh, I know some of the main reasons why people connect with us is because of the teaching. They say, well, I'm not getting this teaching where I'm at. Well, uh, we, we just pray that this podcast especially continues to be a blessing to you. We've been talking about Job, the man God healed. Oh, almost knocked over my millennium Falcon. Uh, Job, the man God healed. Not, not the man God made sick. People think that. Oh, what about Job? Look at what God did to Job. God didn't do anything to Job. It was the devil that did all that to Job. And we've been looking at what the word of God says about this because divine healing is a very important part of what Jesus did for you. When he died on the cross, he died not only for your sin, but to set you free from sickness and disease and to set you free in your mind. So, you know, healing's not a side issue. Jesus was beaten for your healing. So we don't want you to get hung up on certain things in scripture. That, well, what about Job? What about Paul's thorn? What about, we're going to cover some of these things in this this podcast, and it will help you to have an understanding more of how God wants to heal you. And that is his will for your life. So, you know, we don't want to review everything. We want you to go back and look, uh, listen, or watch on YouTube, some of these um, uh, podcasts to to get the review. But we, we saw so far that Job lived an upright life. Job was rich and influential. But upright living, money, you know, doesn't shield you from the attacks of the devil. You need faith. We've been concentrating on that. You need faith to stand against the devil. And, you know, Job had weaknesses in his life, some major weaknesses. We saw that Job could not stand in faith because faith is believing the word of God and speaking the word of God. And Job admitted, he said, you know, I've got perverse things coming out of my mouth. So even though he was upright, even though he lived right and did his best. Job wasn't speaking the right thing. And Job also lived in fear because we see that he had his weaknesses had to do with his children, with his wife, with his family. And Job was regularly making uh, sacrifices for them because he feared for their spiritual state. He also admitted, he said, everything that happened to me, that which I feared has come upon me. So Job lived in the opposite force that you and I are supposed to live in. We're supposed to walk by faith, live by faith. Well, he lived in the opposite. He walked and lived by fear. And fear opens the door for the enemy uh, because we speak and declare the things 
over our life that are based on fear. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. So you need to be speaking God's word over your life, not fearful things or things that the enemy is doing to you that contradict the word of God. We saw that Satan was the cause of everything that Job had been through. That Job didn't just get sick. There was an enemy army. There was fire. There was soldiers that attacked him. There was a tornado that ripped through his property. There was all kinds of things that happened to him. And all along, Job had a wrong opinion about God. He spoke things about God that were not true. The classic one is in Job 121. He said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But the Bible doesn't teach that. When you read the whole context of the Bible, the Bible teaches God is good. God gives us good things. It's the devil who steals, kills, and destroys according to John 10 verse 10. According to James 1 chapter 1, it tells us that God is a giver of good things. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So, but Job didn't have James Job didn't have the gospel of John. He didn't have Ephesians chapter 6 that talks about the armor of God and how to resist the devil. He lived in a time of spiritual darkness. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. And so he lived during this time and did not know how to live by faith. And he says in Job chapter 3, that which I've greatly feared has come upon me. And that opened the door for the enemy and for Satan to have access. Because the New Testament tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, that we need to be sober and vigilant because our adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he's looking for who he can devour. And then what does the Bible tell us? Resist him. How? Steadfast in the faith. And, and, and Job actually, he was not doing that. He didn't know how to do it. He had no revelation of it. And um, at the end of the book of Job, we saw last time that Job repented of the things that he had said. So, uh, and we're going to look at that a little bit more uh, later on as well. But let's look at Job's friends. The book of Job is a record of a conversation between Job and his three friends. Each of his friends had an opinion. You know, you, you got friends like that. You ever go through something and everybody's got their opinion. Sometimes you got to get away from people and you just need to get with God. Everybody's got their stinking opinion about what you're going through. And you need to just say, you know what? I'm going to get along with God and see what God says. And th this was Job had these three guys that saw everything that was happening in Job and they had their opinions about Job's situation. So let's look at them here in this, in this uh, episode of the podcast uh, quickly. Number one is Eliphaz. Eliphaz from Teman. His basic thing was, God is chastening Job. God is disciplining Job. Now, if you look back in our podcast, you'll see we had a series called Religious Misunderstandings, and we dealt with this in, uh, I think, episode five. We dealt with that. So go back and listen to that if you haven't already. We proved in the Word of God that God does not discipline you through sickness and disease and tragedy, but He teaches you and instructs you and disciplines you through the Word of God. That's a whole other topic. But here, Eliphaz, this is what he comes to Job, and he says, hey, listen, God's disciplining you. Job 5, verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty. Well, that's true. You know, we read that. We can read that in other places in the Bible. But Eliphaz thought Job should just be content with just being comforted. You ever have somebody like that? It's going to be okay. But you need more than that. Job needed more than that. Here's some other things that Eliphaz said in Job 4, verses 5 through 8. But now it comes upon you, and you are weary. It touches you, and you are troubled. Is not your reverence your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember now, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the upright ever cut off? Even as I have seen those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. What, what does this mean in our language? You're getting what you deserve. <laughs> man, man, you must have done something, man, because you're getting what you're just, but don't worry. In the end, it'll be all right, buddy. What a terrible friend. That was one of Job's friends. <laughs> then he had, his second friend was Bildad from Sua. And Bildad, the basic premise of Bildad is, Job, God must be teaching you patience. That's what he's doing. Job 8, 
verses three through seven says, uh, does God subvert judgment or does the almighty pervert justice? If your sons have sinned against him, he has cast them away for their transgression. If you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty, if you were were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for you and prosper, prosper your rightful dwelling place. Though your beginning was small, let yet your latter would be increased abundantly. So what is it? What is he saying? Let's put it in today's language. Bildad was saying, it's all because of sin. It's all because of sin, but be patient. God is teaching you patience, Job. It's all going to work out in the end. Listen, if Job had the New Testament, he would understand this. You're never supposed to be patient with the devil. I'm never patient with the devil. Oh, I'll just give it some time and the devil will lay off. No, if I feel that the enemy has entered my family, my church, my life in any way, I'm going to resist him immediately. Amen. We don't want him even his foot even in the front door. So I'm not going to be patient with him. Then he had this other friend. His third friend is Zophar. Zophar from Nema. And this is his, basically what he's saying uh, through all of his quotes. He's saying, sickness is God's plan for Job. And God is working out his mysterious unknown plans in Job's life. Have you ever had something bad happen to you and you had that person in the church that comes to you and says, uh, Oh, well, God is mysterious. His ways are not our ways. We can never know what God's up to. This is Zophar. You know, Zophar's uh, probably a good denominational guy. He's probably a deacon in his church. And uh, Job 11, uh, 6 through 8, this is Zophar. He says that he would show you the secrets of wisdom, for they would double your prudence. God, there, Know, therefore, that God exacts from you less than your iniquity deserves. Can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heaven. What can you do? Deeper than Sheol. What can you know? So according to this, Zophar thought sickness and tragedy gave people wisdom. You know, oh, God's trying to teach you something. You know, he's a, no, God does not reveal his wisdom through things like that. God reveals his secrets, his spirit of wisdom and revelation. He does do it, but not through sickness and disease. In Ephesians 1 verse 17, Paul prayed this prayer. Ephesians 1 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wow. We can actually pray for wisdom and revelation. You don't need to be sick to be wise. You don't need tragedy to happen in your life for God to give you wisdom or teach you something. In James 1 verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. So God's not trying to work out some mysterious unknown thing in your life by bringing tragedy into your life you know that's a sickness and disease or god must have a plan you know like i just can't we can't understand the ways of god you know but the new testament tells us many times that you have the mind of christ so and you can know his ways you know god's not trying to be mysterious i tell anybody everybody this all the time anybody who writes 66 books about themselves and that's what the Bible is, 66 books. It, it, they're not trying to be mysterious. They want you to know who they are, their character, their nature. Now, at the end of the book of Job, you have a new guy come on the scene. You have these three friends. They don't know what they're talking about. Then you have Elihu, who is God's messenger. And he comes on the scene after listening to 30 chapters of nonsense <laughs> about God. Elihu comes on the scene. Now, we don't have time in this podcast. You're going to have to wait till the next one. But he's, he comes on the scene, and in Job 32, verses 1 through 14, you can read it later if you want, he begins to bring God's word into the scene. And I want to read one verse to you, Job 42, verse 7. It says this, And so it was, after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, this was through Elihu, God's messenger, After Job heard the truth about who God was, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, 
This is one of Job's friends. Listen to what God says. My wrath is aroused against you and your two two friends. For you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. You know what this means? This means anywhere in the book of Job where Job's three friends are talking, it's not right. It's in the Bible because it's what they said, but it's not the truth of who God is. I mean, there's, there's one part in the book of Job that says God shoots you with his poisonous arrows. I mean, come on. You, 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 all you got to do is read other parts of the Bible and you know that that's not true. So we can't take the things that Job's friends say and use them as scripture in our lives. We got to look at the whole book of Job, the whole thing. And what's the most important thing to remember? Job is not the man God made sick. Job is the man God healed. Healing is for you. Victory is for you. And I want to pray for you right now as we end this podcast today, because if you are suffering from any kind of an attack of the devil, I believe as we join our faith together right now, we can break that in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for everyone watching this podcast right now, listening. Maybe they're driving their car, or they're just listening in their home, or whatever they're doing. Father, I thank you that you just touch them right now. We rebuke every attack of this enemy. We declare that no weapon formed against people will prosper in the name of Jesus, and we declare declare victory in their body, in their mind, in their family, in their finances. Thank you, Lord. Everything that happened to Job, you restored and you healed him. And I thank you, Father, for bringing restoration and healing to every person who needs it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for listening today to Job, the man God healed, and we can't wait until next time. God bless you.